Hey guys, John here. So the biggest question I always get when I do these courses is where can I get access to the source code? So I obviously can't upload that here on YouTube. So I've made that available for you over on BitTorrent. And along with the source code, you'll also be able to actually download the videos uh, to your computer so you can have them forever. So if for some reason something crazy happened and I decided to delete them or YouTube kicked me off of their site or whatever, it wouldn't really matter for you because you would have all the source code, you'd have all the videos, all everything essentially that I've created for the course you would have on your own computer. So I've created a link in the description where you can find that stuff over on BitTorrent. Please consider going over there, supporting me that way. I'd appreciate that. Also, please consider uh, making a donation here on YouTube using the fan funding. This is how or one of the ways that I'm able to keep all of the videos that I'm doing and releasing here on YouTube for free by those who are able to pitching in and allowing me to do that. So please consider that. And if you need access to any of the resources that I use through everything that I do online, coding, releasing videos, etc., you can head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash resources and I have a whole slew of all sorts of different resources from hosting to different uh, tutorials and just everything over there that I use. So uh, again, johnmorrisonline.com slash resources. All right, on to the lesson. Hey, John Morris here. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to create your database tables dynamically. So in the previous le lesson, we walked through the ins and outs of creating it manually. In this video or this lesson, we're gonna talk about how to do that then dynamically, which is probably the way that you're gonna do it most often. Now, if you are creating an application that you're gonna release for other people, then what I'm gonna show you here may be a part of some sort of install script that you have them run in order to create all of the necessary tables in the database. Uh, if you're familiar with WordPress, uh, that's exactly what WordPress does. And I'm sure uh, a lot of the other content management systems or PHP applications out there do something very similar. So um, again, this is something if you're releasing your application for other people, this is pretty important. If you are just creating an application for yourself or maybe for one website, maybe not uh, as important however it can help you cut down on time if you just create this up front and then uh, kind of add to it as you need to add more tables or whatever the case may be so that if you need to install this somewhere else you don't have to go in and manually create all of the tables again you can just use this uh, install script to help you cut down on time all right so and once you get it written it's pretty easy to maintain after that all right so for this we're going to be using this test database as you can see there's nothing in here i'll go ahead and click here just so you can see there's no tables that have been created in here yet okay so we're going to go ahead and head over to our code and i'll just kind of walk through this code a little bit and then uh, i'll show you it in action so first thing that we're doing at the top here we just need to kind of set some things up in order to be able to work with our database now i'm going to cover connecting and doing queries more in depth later on uh, in this video, I just really want to talk specifically about creating the tables dynamically, but in order to do that, we of course have to connect and query our database. So I'm just going to run through this uh, quick here so that you have a basic understanding of what's happening, but then we're going to talk mostly about the actual query to create the tables. Okay, so again, here we're setting the information we need in order to connect to our database. Essentially, we need the username of the user that can access the database the password, the database name, and then the host, which most often is localhost. All right, so we have those set. Then we're going to connect to our database. Here I'm using my SQLI. So um, if you've seen any of my videos in the past or you've seen other videos where they're using MySQL um, or MySQL Connect is what they use to connect, um, you, you'll, you'll want to get off of that or you'll want to stop using that as that's essentially deprecated and uh, not recommended for use. You want to get on to MySQLi, which is the uh, class, the new class with PHP 5. Uh, gives you an object-oriented interface, has some things in place to help uh, make 
things more secure and also easier. So uh, we're, that's what we're doing. We're instantiating a new uh, instance of that object. We're passing in our host, our user, our password, and our name, which is what this needs in order to connect. Here we're just doing a simple check to see if we're connected. If we're not connected, then it uh, prints out an error and it exits the, exits the script. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Again, I'll go more into depth uh, later on in, in this particular part. Now to the meat of it, what we're doing here is we're essentially, we have three tables that we're gonna create. We're gonna create our objects table, our objects meta, and our object objects and tags relationship table, which is the exact same things we created when we created them manually. Okay, and we're gonna create the exact same fields in the exact same way. All right, so the first one that we want to set up is the objects table. And so here's our query. Um, it's create table if not exists and then the name of our table. So in this case, it's objects. And that is essentially, um, this is the command that you're gonna need to use in order to create the table. You notice we start parentheses and end parentheses here. So this is essentially the command and then in the parentheses, we're going to specify what fields we want created. Okay, so uh, these are gonna look familiar. We're having our ID field created. So you put the name of the field here. We put the type. So this is a big int and it's 20. And then you put the, after that, you're gonna put the attributes that you want this field to have. So we have unsigned, not null, and auto increment. Okay, so that, again, we talked in the, the manual video about what all of those means. Here, we're essentially just uh, creating the exact same fields the exact same way. They mean the exact same thing. We're just doing it in code, okay? So whatever attributes you want this to have, you would just put those uh, right here. And then we have a comma. And then we have the name of our next field. So it's the post title, it's a text field, and it is not null. So we don't have anything else for that. For post content, that's the name. Then we have the long text and not null. Next we have post name. It is a var char. We'll uh, move that back. It's like a little typo there. It's 20 and it's not null, okay? And we have the post date, it's a date time field, and it's not null. All right, so I think that's all pretty probably um, familiar to you if, after you've gone through the manual video. One thing that may be a little bit new is this. We're setting the primary key, and in parentheses, we're putting the ID. So which key is the primary key? So this has to do with, again, keying the database. Um, when you're running queries and things like that, it knows what the, the, the primary key is for that particular table, okay? It's almost always going to be whatever your ID field is here. All right, so those uh, that's the query in order to uh, create a table. And then down here, we're just running our query. So we're using the query method from our MySQLi object. We're passing in our variable objects table. We're just running a condition on it, so uh, if this operation, well, this operation returns true, which if it creates the table, uh, it'll return true. If it doesn't, then it uh, won't return true. So if it returns true, then we're gonna print that the table was created successfully, okay? So I think that's all pretty self-explanatory. So that's our objects table. Now down here, we have our objects meta table. Again, create table if not exists object meta, we have our parentheses, and inside our parentheses, then we're specifying what fields we want. So we have meta ID, again, it's big int 20, unsigned, not null, auto increment. Our object ID is also big int 20, it's unsigned and not null. Our meta key is a varchar 255. Our meta value uh, is a long text type, and in here, our primary key is our meta ID field up here, okay? So again, very similar to the one above, very some exact same as what we did in the manual. Uh, again, we're just coding it out here. Again, we're gonna run that query, check if, to see if it returns true, and if it does, we're going to print or echo essentially that that was created, that table was created success, successfully. All right, our last table is our object tag relationships table. Again, create table if not exists, 
object tag relationships, our parentheses, and then our fields are our ID, again, big int 20, unsigned, not null, auto increment. Our object ID, big int, unsigned, not null. And our tag ID, big int 20, unsigned, not null. And again, our primary key is our ID field. All right, so hopefully, uh, you know, if maybe that wasn't clear to start uh, through the repetition of seeing it uh, multiple times, you can see that uh, how each one of those things work and how oftentimes your queries or your tables when you create them are going to be pretty similar. You really are just kind of um, inserting or replacing or taking out certain lines for what fields you happen to need. All right, so again on this one, we're going to run that query. If it returns true, we're going to print that that table was created successfully. All right, so that is all the code that we need to create those three tables. So what we'll do is we'll come over to this page and we'll refresh this page and you can see that we have that all three were created successfully. That's what's been uh, printed out here for us. So if we go back over to our test database and we click again, you can see that now we have our three different tables. So if we click into objects, You'll see that we have all of the fields set up as we specified, big int, unsigned, auto increment, not null, uh, text, long text, bar chart, date time, on down the line. This is exactly what we specified in our code. And it's exactly the same as what we created in the video on manual creation. All right, if we go to object meta, again, all of our fields, they are built according to what we specified. Big int, big int, varchar, long text, uh, so on and so forth, okay? And finally, our object tag relationships. We have our ID, object ID, and tag ID. All big ints, all unsigned, all not null, and of course the first one is auto increment.